All right, thank you guys for your patience. We can go ahead and get started. My name is Alofa and I am the event coordinator for Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii, while Anissa, today's tech guru, is the program director at NAMI Hawaii. Um, if you're on Zoom, you can see um, she is Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii. Please note that this workshop is for educational purposes only and is not therapy or treatment advice. Please consult your physician or a qualified healthcare provider if you have specific mental health concerns. Also, this is being live streamed to the NAMI Facebook page, and we are recording this workshop so it can be uploaded to our YouTube channel later. If you would prefer, you are welcome to change your name on Zoom to protect your privacy. As a part of our Creative Coping Summer Series, we will be offering a booklet compiling all of the work created and submitted by our attendees. The last day to submit will be August 31st. And after today's workshop, I will send out a link that will allow you to submit your work if you choose to do so. Last but not least, please keep in mind that we want to create a safe, supportive space where people are free to share their stories and questions and receive understanding and compassion. All right, now for a little bit about us. Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii is a nonprofit organization that provides professional, accessible mental health counseling, sensitive to the traditions of individuals, families, and communities in Hawaii, regardless of their ability to pay. We also coordinate community events like this one to provide mental health education, strengthen resilience, and help reduce the stigma of mental illness. On the other hand, we have NAMI Hawaii, which provides free support groups and classes for both peers in recovery and family members who love them. If you'd like to learn more about what's offered at these organizations, feel free to visit our websites, namihawaii.org or samaritancounselingcenterhawaii.org. And before we begin, I'd like to introduce our host. Ihilani Lasconia is a Kanaka Oibi scholar, organizer, and artist from Waimanalo, Oahu. She is a proud member of a firm Hawaii and Hui Aloha Aina o Honolulu. Ihilani recently graduated from the University of Hawaii with her master's in education. In the fall, she will begin her doctoral work in political science with a special focus on indigenous politics. As an artist, Ihilani uses poetry to engage folks in meaningful discussions about using art as a tool of empowerment, wellness, and the importance of community. Now I'll pass it off to Ihi. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aloha. And yeah, so good to see everyone here. Thank you so much for having me. It's going to be a great time. We have a lot of good things in store. Um, one thing that I'll ask before we get into the workshop, and I'm sure you've all done this already, is if you have something to write with, that would be perfect, whether it be um, just like a notepad pulled up on your tablet or a laptop or a pen or pencil, that would be perfect. Thank you. Uh, slide, please. Okay. Um, so before we jump into the workshop, um, thank you so much for trusting me and leading you through this. And part of building that trust and communication in this space is letting you folks know just a little bit more of who, I'm, who I am, what I'm about, and the things that bring me into this work. And so here are just a couple of pictures that I feel like really um, express who I am. Like Aloha said, I'm a part of Hui Oloha Aina O Honolulu, which is an incredible organization in Hawaii that was actually created um, when we were an independent kingdom. And it works to educate folks about the political history of Hawaii and our occupation. I'm also part of Affirm Hawaii, which is a transnational feminist org. One of the really big things I do that keep me grounded, and I'll talk about it a little more in the workshop too, is I know work or working on land or with water. So that bottom right picture, um, the farm my works at, my family works at, and we grow kalo. Another really big part of who I am is activist work and organizing. So there's a lot of issues in Hawaii in regards to land and water. So as someone who's Kanako EV or Hawaiian, connecting those struggles um, to my work or my art is really important to me. And I also wouldn't be who I am today without my incredible niece, who I love to babysit right in the middle, and my grandparents. So being raised by my kupuna or my elders has been incredibly pivotal to how I see the world, how I see myself in it. Um, and I hope to represent all of these aspects of me in the work that I'm doing today. Yeah, so it's nice to meet you all. Oh, I also love dirt biking. That's like my hobby when I'm not at school. 
so nice to meet you all. Slide. Awesome. Okay, so here's today's workshop overview. We'll be doing an intro exercise called Ovai Oi, which roughly translates to who are you. We'll be talking about our relationship to vai or water. We have some people from all over the country or even all over the world today. So I'll be sure to break down these terms, what they mean. Um, just as a disclaimer, this workshop is Hawaii oriented. So even if you're not here, you're going to learn a lot about Hawaii, some of our water struggles, get more familiar with what's going on here. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. We're going to be talking, talking about protecting our waters through pilina. Pilina also means relationships or relationship building. We're going to be looking at poetry as the art of remembering and that in um, to what we're doing today. And then we're getting, we'll be getting into or the type of questions we that exercise, we have time to write. And then after that, we'll have a large share back for folks who want to share what they worked on, talk about their writing process, or really anything they wanted to bring into the space today. All right. With that being said, does anybody have any other questions before we go into this next part of the workshop? All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay, so as you folks know, the title of this workshop is Ovai Oi, or Who Are You? So when we think about processing, when we think, when we think about grounding ourselves, it's a really, really common question in Hawaii for someone to ask um, who they are. Um, but in, in court, Oh, can you folks hear me? It looks like I'm frozen. Awesome. Sorry, my computer glitched for a little bit. Um, but a little quick Olalo Hawaii lesson. Um, vai or water also has so many meanings. So when thinking about processing, reflecting, coming from Kano'ono Hawaii or Hawaiian perspective or understanding, knowing that vai or water and the words that define it have so many different translations. Um, so who are you? Vai can also mean water. Vai can also mean who, vai can also mean blood, and vai vai can also mean wealth. So all these different aspects um, of who we are and how we identify connected um, by this one really simple but really beautiful word. Something that I also wanted to bring into the conversation is the last word that I put down, which is vai vai, and that translates to wealth. And also bringing it back um, to Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian understandings, vai vai or this wealth didn't necessarily mean how much money you had in terms of dollars, cents, wealth, how much vai or how much water was in your community, how much food you could grow, how well you could sustain your, uh, your people or your community. So tying this back into poetry, reflecting, grounding and processing part of the wealth that we want to generate today, part of this vai vai is being able to ground ourselves and reflect on the things that we've been through collectively. Slide. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. And I know that there's a lot of uh, Olalo Hawaii or Hawaiian in this presentation. I'll do my best to give translations throughout. But if you folks had any questions at any time, feel free to put it in the chat. I can monitor that as well. So we'll be doing really brief introductions. If you feel comfortable putting it in the chat instead of unmuting, that's totally perfect, but you're going to be saying your name, your aina, or the land that you represent, and a kupuna or ancestor that you bring into this space. Um, so I'll set an example. Aloha, everyone. My name is Ihilani Laskonya. The aina that I come from is Waimanalo O'ahu in Hawaii, and a kupuna or an ancestor that I bring into this space is my tutukane or my grandpa, John Keli'iho Omalu Amadeo. And I'll also put the translations for these words in the chat. So if anyone wants to unmute themselves or put it in the chat, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Can you give us a definition for ancestor? Does that mean they should be living or no longer with us? That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking. So kupuna is any ancestor who's currently with us or beyond so it can be someone who's passed, someone that you still live with. And the goal of this um, is bringing in the understanding that although folks may have passed, or we may not be living with the ancestors that we once grew up with, knowing that their love is still with us. Um, and also tying it back to Hawaiian culture, that perspective, and understanding that kupuna, or our ancestors, are a source of strength. Um, but yeah, that's just the maimana or thoughts. So yeah, here or have, have passed, 
whatever you feel called uh, to bring into the space. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chaz. Nikki. Oh. Awesome. Maui. Oh, my my grandpa's from Maui. So that's that's awesome. We have people tuning in from the UK. It's incredible. Nice. Oh, I love that we have so many people from around the world. Like I said, it's a very Hawaii-centric workshop, but you're gonna learn a lot. And I promise, like some of the things you think about Hawaii are gonna be undone in this workshop, which I think is a good thing. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, I'll give it another minute or so in case anyone wants to put their introduction into the chat. But also if you wanted to unmute yourself, that's totally okay as well. I also love that so many people are bringing grandparents into this space. And it's when I think about my kupuna or my grandparents, I don't think any of them would ever identify as a poet or a writer. But I think even the way that just grandparents, they move and they operate in the world, like that's poetry to me, or even like the life lessons that they give. So yeah, so great to see so many grandparents being brought into this space today. It's awesome. All right, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for introducing yourself. As we move through this workshop, something that I also want to think about or encourage you folks to do is to remember the kupuna that you bring with you, um, channel their energy or the memories that you've had with them into this work, because part of this um, workshop is we're going to be reflecting um, on vai or water, and our kupuna are always connected like to their waters, no matter where they be from. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, it's so good to see where everyone's from, who they're bringing to the chat. I'm stoked. Okay. Slide. Awesome. Okay, so relationship to vi, relationship to water. So you might be asking yourself in terms of reflection, in terms of grounding, in terms of counseling broadly, what does vi or water have to do with any of this stuff, anything like dealing with processing? Something that I want to really emphasize in this workshop today is that being connected to the lands and waters that surround us is really, really critical to our own mental, spiritual, and physical well-being. So part of the goal of this workshop is to orient you to a vi or water that you're connected to to strengthen your relationship with that. So relationship to vi, it's important to remember that no matter where we are, our relationship to water is important, regardless if you're living in your native homeland or abroad, connecting to this water is something that we should all be striving to do. Vai or water is what nourishes and connects us to each other and our home. Uh, colonization, especially in Hawaii, but also around the globe, threatens to take away the relationship we have to our waters. Sorry for my dog. Um, and continuing to have a relationship to Aina or Earth is our collective responsibility. And part of this relationship is knowing and protecting our waters. All right, slide. All right. Can everyone still hear me? Okay. I know there's a dog barking. The mailman just got here. So if you could thumbs up if you can send me. Okay. Thank you for bearing along with me as well. Currently tuning in from my grandma's house. So there's a lot going on. But yeah. okay. Thank you. Uh, so the next part of this poetry workshop is we're going to be going over some different water struggles in Hawaii. Sorry, there's a dog barking. Let me take care of that for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, so one of the struggles that I think if you were interested in coming to Hawaii or if even if you live in Hawaii, you should know about is the Waihole water struggle of 1970. And like I said, bringing back this relationship to Vai is really important. And so in 1970s, there was a sugar and pineapple factory, or many I should say, that diverted thousands of gallons of water from Waihole to Ewa 
It left taro farmers, also known as kalo farmers, with little to no water. It damaged the entire ahupua'a or ecosystem in Hawaii. Um, so as you know, or maybe you don't, um, Hawaii has a really small landmass. So the ecosystem that we have is incredibly fragile. So moving water from one aina or land to another, it's incredibly detrimental uh, to the health of that place. But what's important to remember is that community members stood up against big developers to return the water. And these really awesome groups, such as Ethnic Studies at UH Manoa, supported these struggles and had students directly involved. Yeah, like I said, and I can't stress this enough, um, as with the theme of this workshop is Vai or water, um, something that I really wanted to bring into the space today is letting you folks know about the waters that we share, we come from, or even if you're tuning in from a place that's not Hawaii, um, getting to learn more about this place that you don't see, like the tourist brochures or the magazines. Yeah, slide. Okay, another struggle that you should learn about. And like, again, I emphasize and I wanted to bring these struggles into the space because all of these struggles disrupt the connections that we have to Vai or to water. And even if you're not living in Hawaii, I can almost guarantee you because there's so many water crisis, crises around the world that something like this is happening in your own neighborhood. So another struggle is East Maui. Um, there was a struggle and it's still going on today called Nawai Eha, and it talks about the four waters and rivers, Wailuku, Waihe'e, Waihu, and Waikapu. And all of those rivers were diverted for sugar development. And there was no water again left for Kalo farmers. And there was a 20 plus year legal battle in court only for a portion of the water to be returned, which was incredibly, incredibly difficult. And the fact that this struggle is still going on uh, is, is ridiculous, but there is hope. Slide. Okay, the next struggle, and I think, I think a few more people might actually be acquainted with this one, um, since you've probably seen it on the news. I know there were some international headlines about this, um, but what's going on with Kapukaki or Red Hill water struggle, which has been the most recent one to have impacted Hawaii, but specifically Oahu, which is the main island in the Hawaiian chain. So 20 fuel tanks were built by the US military in 1943 um, with the purpose of being engaged in World War II over Oahu's largest aquifer. So if you're not incredibly familiar um, with, with Oahu or with aquifers, aquifers hold all of our groundwater and our fresh water that people use to water uh, their grass, to shower, to wash their cars. And it's also the biggest aquifer in Hawaii that nourishes the most people. And so the tanks have leaked periodically and they carry petroleum. Um, and so they've leaked periodically into our water system, but the biggest leak, and it's been tens of thousand gallons um, being leaked into our aquifer and our water system in December, 2021. People and animals were poisoned and the military did very little to help. So many of their own soldiers and citizens um, were actually harmed because of the oil that was leaking into our water system. Um, but like I said, there's always hope because community organizing and cultural practitioners are stepping up to ensure all of Hawaii has safe drinking water. Slide. Awesome. And so as the people of Hawaii, our water connects us and it's our job to protect them no matter where we are. And I also want to extend um, the same responsibility or conviction to folks who are either tuning in um, on the continental United States or anywhere that as the people of the current land that you represent, our water connects us, no matter if it's a stream or a river or a pond, or even as large as an ocean, um, it's something that connects us and not divides us. And it's our collective responsibility, regardless if you're native to these lands or not, to protect them. Slide. Okay. And so part of this struggle, part of this grounding, part of this reflection, part of this reclamation to the relationship which we should have with our environment is remembering our connection to this aina, or this land and the vai that sustain us. Slide. Okay, so my poina, which translates to never forget, we are an extension of these waters. And I know that for me, especially um, when I'm feeling stressed, when I feel like I don't know how to process everything that's going on, when I feel disconnected uh, to myself or the different relationships I have, um, one of the things that I always do is ho'yikawai, which is return to the water, return to the, return to the ocean as a way to unplug. And even if you don't have the opportunity or privilege to do that where you are, 
connecting to these memories of Vai um, or these memories of water is something that we're going to learn how to do today. Slide. Okay, so you might be wondering, uh, what does this have to do with poetry? You registered, you signed up, you just got a crash course in water struggles in Hawaii. And you might think that this doesn't really connect with anything. And if you, you feel that way, 100% agree. But trust me in this one, like it does, it does make sense. And we're going to be using all that you've just learned to create um, our old poem. So what does this have to do with poetry? Next slide, please. So poetry is the art of remembering. And so I think growing up, I never would have considered myself a poet or a writer because it seemed so lofty and unattainable. For me, the only like artist that I've ever seen like or read or heard from in my English classes, classes were folks like from Europe or folks from the continent. And a lot of their work really didn't resonate with me. Um, but then now as I'm getting older and getting more into my art, understanding that fundamentally poetry is the art of remembering so anytime someone creates this work of art it's not just commemorating something that's beautiful or something like that they want to celebrate but it's literally the art of giving mana or power to a person place or thing and that is an incredibly important act so like i said poetry is the art of remembering and in terms of reflection processing grounding this is an incredibly powerful tool tool next slide please all right, so poetry, like remembering, is a highly personal act. And so like I said, again, in terms of grounding, centering yourself, knowing that it's something that's incredibly intimate and it can be really challenging. And like I said, like the best advice that I could give you, no matter what like you're going through, is taking the time to be with yourself and to be in your own body and to reflect and part of that reflection can also be through the process of poetry, remembering what you've been through, what you're going through can also be really pivotal to seeing how you're going to get out of the situation or whatever is causing you harm um, in that moment. So yeah, like I said again, I know I said that a lot. Poetry, like remembering, is a highly personal act. Slide. All right. The next thing we're going to be going into is ode poetry. Uh, it might seem a little daunting, but it's okay. I'll be breaking down what that is for you folks. And we're going to be using this form for our poetry workshop today. Slide. Okay. So what is an ode? Quite simply put, an ode is a short lyric poem that praises an individual, an idea, or an event. Slide. So what is an ode to us? So you may have shown up to this workshop not identifying as a poet, or maybe just wanted to learn more um, about what the bio said. And so regardless if you identify as a poet or an artist or not, we can use this form. So what is an ode to us just as people in general? It's the act of remembering. Like I said, and remembering is a highly personal and political act. It's the act of remembering an aina, including vai or water, or a person or event as a means to honor them through mele or song. And so also tying that back in to no no Hawaii or Hawaiian understanding, um, poetry also, like another translation for poetry is song. So understanding like that there's so many ways to celebrate things. And one of the ways that we can do this is through our art or through our melee or through our poems. Right. Yeah, so that kind of deviates. Oh yeah, you can, you can translate, yeah, perfect. Yeah, you can stay on that one, that's perfect. And so going back, um, to old poetry, why it's important and why it's good for us. Um, part of reflecting, part of building, building that connection is something that this specific form allows us to do. And so we can use old form slash poetry to remember the vibe we are connected to and come from. Slide. Awesome. Okay, so for the next couple of minutes, and I'll call us back um, in a few, is if you could take out um, either like a sticky note on your laptop or um, a pen or paper, what are some bodies of water that you feel connected to? It could be a beach, a stream, a pond, tap water from your house, or like the tap from the house you grew up in, really any body of water that you feel connected to. So we're going to take the next couple of minutes to jot some things down. Uh, we'll have some time for people to unmute themselves or put it in the chat and share about these bodies of water. So if you wanted to turn off your camera, feel free to do so as well. And I'll call us back at around 1030 to share back. Okay, just take the next couple of sentences or sorry, my apologies, seconds to wrap up 
what you are writing. Feel free to turn your camera on if you're able to. And then we'll do a really, really brief share back from just a few people about the Vai or the waters that they've um, feel drawn to write about. We can start us off and um, if anybody wants to share in the chat too, I can read those uh, for everybody as well. But I feel especially connected to the ocean um, because that's where I spent most of my time as a child. And uh, whenever I'm in the ocean, I um, kind of forget about all the things that I was worried about. It's a, a place of relief for me. So I'll open the floor to others as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alofa. That was beautiful. Thank you. Go on then, I'll share something. Um, so I'm from the UK. So I just hope I'm pronouncing this right. Blackpool Beach is different from the way of Hawaii. It is not so blue, but gray. The beach gets busy on a hot summer's day. Donkey rides, candy floss, and sticks of rock. But that's all I wrote, so yeah. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. I'm not even in the meat, like the writing portion of this workshop and you're already coming with all this greatness. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> much for Thank sharing. You. Ah, I'm so excited like for what's to come. Chris, I see that your hand is up. Please feel free to share. So I come from Ireland and the bodies of water that I feel really strongly connected to are um, the, uh, the actual source of, of our capital city's name, Dublin, comes from the Irish Dublin, which means Black Pool. Um, and it's the source of the River Liffey in the Wicklow Mountains. It's a very large, dark um, lake high up in the mountains. And also... Um, the Gulf Stream waters that surround the Channel Islands, where I, I lived for about 15 years, because they they were a hugely moderating influence and actually the, the reason I moved to the islands. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I didn't know that about Dublin. I love translations and figuring out words and where they come from. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, Chaz, I see that you're unmuted. Did you want to share something? But also no oh, pressure to it. I didn't, I didn't know I unmuted. <laughs> no worries. Okay, Chris, shall I read? Sounds good. Oh, shall I share? Yes, uh, if you're comfortable. Oh, to oh sure. Just, just the answering the question of bodies of water that I'm connected to. Crescent Beach, South Carolina, first place I played in the Atlantic Ocean. Rocky River near the farm I, where I grew up, swimming, walking, fishing, contemplating, Chicken Foot Mountain Stream in Taejeon, South Korea, the Han River in Seoul, the Silk River I crossed over and over on my way back to school and back in Korea, Cape Hatteras, Kitty Hawk, where the Wright brothers flew and the lighthouse beacon shines over ship graveyards. Water was drinkable at the Harris Spring when I was a child and my great grandmother walked to the spring to drink. The wandering streams and springs in the forest back of our farm where I grew up, well water, well water, clean well water. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. That was beautiful. I can't believe that folks are coming up with essentially like pretty pretty amazing poems within three minutes and that's not even this is even like the poetry writing part so thank you so much for sharing I love that repetition um like well 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 water oh it's beautiful I hope you implement that into the poem that you're going to be writing beautiful okay it's like I'm getting a little carried away I'm also very excited right now because this is awesome you're all awesome so the next thing that we'll be doing is actually going into the meat of this workshop and really giving you folks the time to write so slide, please. Perfect. Okay, so here's our writing exercise. Uh, going back to the title of the poetry workshop, Ovai Oi, or Who Are You? And what I want to reemphasize is that 
when someone asks like who you are or even when you want to reflect about who you are as a person, um, think about this phrase, o vai oi. Um, think about vai, think about water and understanding that the waters you're connected to um, are such a huge part of who you are, regardless if you choose to acknowledge that or not. And so below are the instructions. I'll read this through for everyone. I'll keep them posted up. And the first instruction is to pick a vai or a water that you want to remember or commemorate as folks who've shared previously um, have allowed us like to learn like these wells, these rivers, these streams, any one of those that resonate with you is perfect. And so begin each stanza um, section of the poem or also like a line with, I remember. And so the instructions are pretty um, repetitive, but have each line start with the following. I remember the way, I remember the smell, I remember the taste. I remember the sound, I remember the feel. And have that last line of your poem be, most of all, I remember. So really creating and curating that memory of a vai that you wanna stay connected to is what we'll be doing in this next aspect of the workshop. So here are the instructions. If you feel so inclined um, as to disregard anything of what I've just said, go for it. Um, these are just loose instructions to help guide you in your writing process. And yes, Renee, thank you so much. Vai uh, is water. It could also mean like a body of water. Yeah, thinking about a water that you feel connected to. Um, so with that being said, I will let you folks go um, to write for the next 10 minutes or so. I'll call you back when we're ready. And don't feel like you have to have a perfectly finished and polished poem um, by the end of our writing time. Yeah, feel free to begin writing and take these instructions or disregard them. Uh, the time is yours to create whatever it is you want to bring into this space. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so now we're in the large group shareback portion um, of this workshop. Thank you so much for getting our slides together. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so Ruby. Yeah, now is the time, it's the place, it's the space to share what you've worked on. You can share all of what you wrote, just a snippet, your writing process, or even just a memory that you have to this vai. And I'm getting something in the chat. Okay, perfect. So we'll start with Chaz. And then I see that Chris, you have your hand up. And then whoever wants to jump in after, right, the floor is yours. Ode to Spring Water of Harris Spring in country North Carolina, feeding well water of the rainbow in my childhood soul. I remember the way Grandma Harris in her long gray dress toddled and teetered from the church cemetery to the edge of the woods where over rocks with a cup suspended from a watering stick, she dipped her cup into the freshly minted waters flowing by, flowing by. We always prayed before we said goodbye. I remember the cobalt blue and clear silver steel of the cup bearing the sweet aroma of daffodils and lilies of the field and red clay. On any rainy day, the sun licked stones where water, water uh, washed into a place I dreamed of home, drunk as a skunk. Most of all, I remember grandmother loving Grandma Harris and giving her and me well water to drink. I think I feel found in this well, full of washed, lovely, white, remembering I never will forget. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. You had a line that really stood out to me. Sorry, I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm just like writing down the things that I love. And you wrote, I think I feel found in this well. Oh, and that's so beautiful. It, this, it kind of disrupts what people think about wells since most of the stories, like a little girl falls into it. But feeling found in this source of light, well, this water is incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank okay, you. We, yeah, we have Chris and then Renee will be up next. Thank you so much, everyone. I remember the way you sparkled like liquid emerald as I arrived through thick clouds from a, a gray world 
and the sudden awe I felt for the green oasis I was discovering. I remember the smell of seaweed baking on your shores and the cleansing ozone of the breathy air you pushed into my lungs, washing away a dull past and a stale life, and the sudden warmth I felt in your breezy embrace. I remember the taste of your brine spray on my lips and the fresh skate you offered as your first bounty, rejuvenating a jaded palate with your vibrance and the sudden thanks I felt for that melting nourishment. I remember the sound of the crashing waves and crying gulls and the roar of your powerful storms and the thunder you shook me with occasionally and the sudden connection I felt with your power and majesty. I remember the feel of you, cool and crisp on my skin, warm and welcoming from the first toe to complete submersion and the sudden sensation of coming home. And most of all, I remember the beat of your waves in my heart, your tide in my blood, and the unrelenting sense of being completely alive in your arms. Oh my goodness. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, liquid emerald. That's that's such like a I can I can picture it, even if I can't articulate it right now. Oh, that's awesome. And the beat of waves in my heart. I was trying to write alongside um, you folks. It takes me forever to write anything, but one of the lines that I had um, in, in mind was, I remember the sound of waves, the pounding of Earth's heart against mine. So knowing that we're so far apart, but this imagery um, and this feeling of like kai, which is salt water in Hawaiian, or like vai connecting us. Ah, oh, it's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So beautiful, so beautiful. All right, Renee, you're up next. Hi. I remember the Harlem Mirror in Central Park. I remember the way the Harlem Mirror flourishes with plant life and animals, frogs and insects, birds and trees. I remember the smell after rain, smells like mildew and mold. I remember the taste of cookies I ate as I sat by the mirror feeding ducks, fiber one nutrition bars. I remember the ducks quacking as they told onto the land to eat and relax on the grass. I remember the sound of some ducks. It, 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 rem, it reminded me of the Joker's laugh. I remember the feel of the duck's bill when I tried to touch one as I fed him. It hurt a bit but my fingers survived. Most of all, I remember the four ducks who were always together on the Harlem Mirror. They reminded me of the four musketeers. They were good friends. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I, I can... I can see everything so clearly, like even though we don't share this memory and it's so beautiful. Yes, the juxtaposition that Chaz mentioned in the chat is, is beautiful. And I really love the Joker's laugh too. As someone who's deathly afraid of ducks because I got bit by one, trying to feed one in a park, I do hear the Joker in, in the ducks. Oh, that was beautiful. And even, oh, I really like, um, you had a line that, that talked about the smells of mildew and mold and like something that I really like about poetry is that it doesn't necessarily romanticize things but bringing things that aren't considered like beautiful like the smell of mildew into a memory so it might not be like aesthetically the quote-unquote pretty but it's those really real memories that I think have that deeper beauty and I remember the smell of mildew in my old house and like as disgusting as it was I I miss that place so yeah thanks for bringing those memories into there as well Oh, awesome. It's nice to hear so many people's memories. So I think that was everyone who raised their hand, but is there anybody else? Oh, I see. Is it Mickey or Mikey? Sorry, I don't want to mispronounce your name. It's all right. Some people call me Mickey and some people call me Mikey. I don't mind. Okay. So I wrote this about my best friend. I remember the way you made me smile. You were the calm on the ocean shore as the sun sets above the sea. 
you are the shells I can't collect anymore. Collages of colours in the skies above. You were as gentle as a dove. I remember the smells of cotton candy walking across the beach, fluffy and sandy. As the sand through hand and tickled my toes, I see you as the waves as they ebb and flow. Even in the winter, as the gale flows blows, I remember the ember as the fire crackles to the sound of our laughter against the wind, the pain in my belly from laughing so much. Most of all, I remember the December of losing you as the sea waves goodbye to the sunset sky. I miss you so much, but I know you are free. I'll see you in eternity. Oh goodness, that was so beautiful. And I know that I say that about everyone's poem, but it's it's true every single time and I mean it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I feel like, I think I saw it in the chat, um, the shells I can't collect anymore. That That's so, oh, I, I love I love that line. And as someone, um, I recently lost my grandpa who was, um, he was my dad, he raised me we would always go and collect shells like on our favorite beach. Oh. And it doesn't feel the same without him, but holding those memories in those places where we spent with people is beautiful. Yeah. You also had another line that I thought Thank was, you. it was brilliant. Um, as the fire cackles to the sound of our laughter, that like, that double play on words. Oh. Thank you so much. Of course. It means a lot. Thank you. Of course, yeah. thank you so much for sharing. Okay, I think we have, uh, sorry, let me make my screen a little bigger so I can see everyone's face. Um, I see a hand up um, from Mel Guentina. Mel uh, Hi, everybody, happy day. Hello, the floor First, is yours. Let me, you, let me show you what I did with my poem. Love it. Okay, now I'm gonna read it. I, I remember the look, oh, so beautiful. I remember the way I felt when I first saw the beach, excited. I remember the smell of the fresh air and plants. I remember the taste of the fresh fruit my mom brought to eat. I remember the sound of the waves hitting the sand and the rocks. I remember the feel of the wind and the cool breeze across my body. Most of all, I remember the wonderful time spent with family and friends. I love that. And I love all these memories. Did you make that drawing onto the poem or was it part of the paper? No, no, I do that. Oh, that's so cool. It's a person holding up the words. I love it. The face, the hands at the top. Mm -hmm. And the little feet at the bottom. So cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, there's this whole visual aspect of poetry as well. But sometimes right. unsung heroes of this work. Oh, you're like, yeah, that's that's so cool. I love that. Sorry, I feel like I'm saying like that's so cool, that's so awesome, like over and over again. But like I'm I mean it, I'm just hyped. Like this is um, even like we've all have just gotten acquainted with each other. This is something that I personally didn't know um I needed so badly. So thank you everyone for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, we're slowly coming to our time. I want to respect um, everyone's, um, what, what they need to do today and their time, like I said. Um, so I'll leave um, some space if anyone wants like to share it quickly, just one more. If not, I will turn it back to Alofa to wrap up. Um, but thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being here, for showing up. I know it's evening um, for a few of you. So yeah, I, I cannot express how thankful I am for each and every single one of you for sharing your stories, for sharing these waters. Even if we haven't met before, I know that the ocean connects us. And even if it's just like the tap water, there's some connection there. So when they ask, this is specific to Hawaii, but we can think about it globally as well. Ovai or who are you? Just say, Moana Nuya Kea, Tuahine or Pua Kea, which are these, these names of Vai in Hawaii. But say it's, I would be remiss not to say that 
um, where you are to represent the vibe that you come from, whether it's in Dublin, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in North Carolina, all of these vibe um, contribute to who we are. And don't, don't forget to represent that in everything you do and especially in your work. And so, yeah, I think this group is just as vibrant as the waters that they speak about. And mahalo. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to connect with me, I, um, I am on Instagram, not really on much else, um, but I'll also put in my email. I cannot thank you folks enough for being here today. And I'll see you folks soon. I'll pass it off to Aloha for final remarks. Thank you so much, Ihi, and thank you all for joining us for the final session of the summer series of Creative Coping. Before I sign off, I do want to review a few things. I've just put two links in the chat. The first link is for submitting the ode that you wrote today. We ask that you complete the intellectual property consent form if you choose to do so. And second, you'll find the link for our survey. Please go ahead and click on that link and fill out the survey now. It's not very long and it will help us make the next workshop better. I'd, uh, if you'd like to revisit this workshop, I do recommend it. Or if you'd like to recommend it to a friend who couldn't attend, you can find a playback of the live stream on NAMI's Facebook page, or you'll be able to find it on SCCH's YouTube channel in about a week or two. Um, you will find the links to everything I just mentioned in a thank you email that went out uh, exactly one minute ago, actually. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us or visit our websites. But thank you guys all very much. All right. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.